Well, I'm Casey Aiken, and this is 21 This Week. Coming up next, the nation and the state of Maryland are in the grips of the Wuhan virus as schools, sports events, and businesses shut down. And will the General Assembly adjourn before Sinni die? Stay tuned. Our panel of insiders will give you the story behind the story. We're joined by the former Majority Leader of the Maryland House of Delegates, John Herson. Secretary of the Maryland Republican Central Committee, Mark Unkefer. Vice Chairman of the Montgomery County Republican Central Committee, Dwight Patel and political strategist Susan Heltmus. Stay tuned for these stories and more on the next 21 This Week. I want to open tonight's show with a very personal statement. For weeks now, I have tried, as all of you have, to put into context the dangers from the coronavirus which originated in Wuhan, China. Early on, one of my clients, a surgeon, expressed dismay that there was growing hysteria, since in his view, the Wuhan virus was less deadly than the annual flu, and that most people would have little to no impact if exposed to the virus. And generally, I subscribe to that view, since the known threat of the flu is grave and remains greater than what is known about COVID-19. But it's the unknown threat that has so far paralyzed the nation. So while I intend to be reassuring, it's often impossible to be dismissive of the threat. Mark, the country has been whipshod by the threat of the Wuhan virus. According to the website, Kenora Virus Worldwide, the actual number of cases in the United States remains relatively low as of today only 1,873 cases, and the numbers of deaths are placed at 41, or 2% or of those afflicted. Are governments and businesses acting in a rational manner? Yes, they are, and I think the important thing is we were on this show last week, and that number of cases in the United States was one-third, and that's consistent with the, the, the doubling that has been taking place over the last several days. If you continue to project that out into April or into May, you're talking about as a doubling progresses cases in millions. Um, even if fewer than 10% of those cases end up having to be hospitalized, that has the potential of completely overwhelming our healthcare system. Mark, Mark we're a nation of 350 million people. Correct. We have 1,800 cases of this virus so far after six weeks. The threat is not the number of cases we currently have. The threat is the rapid the increase, growth. the exponential growth that has taken place, not just here in the United States. I mean, we talked about compared well, with where we were at the beginning of the mm -hmm. month, but the same growth pattern that took place in other countries as well. And the first and that's what cases the fear is. came oh, about the first part of March, Casey. You have to realize that, too. You think about it, it's growing quickly. No, the first case happen, happened in February. Susan. Yes, but the, the bigger ones. I mean, so, just no, think about what happened in New York this week. One guy and, and the city of New Rochelle is locked down because he affected his synagogue, his work face. The kid's school, university where his son goes, the school where his daughter goes, his wife has it. The guy who took him to the hospital has it. It is 10 mm -hmm. times more lethal than the regular no, I flu. I think people need to, one, take a step back. This is, let's step back. This is not in time to panic. I think we need to have cooler heads. I think it's all about, uh, this is more like akin to the common cold no. than it is the flu. Yes. It's it 10 is, times it's more lethal no, than the actually, common flu. Susan, wait a minute. Susan, you're wrong. It's actually 40 times more lethal than the cold. If you do the numbers, Sure. Of, 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 the, of the flu, if you do the numbers of the number of, of the deaths that took place last year, it was lower than, you know, basically we one fortieth of two percent. small sampling. I don't think any of these numbers can, are, are supportable, Mark. I mean, we have a very small sampling of the number of people that have, that, have, that have been diagnosed. And as testing gets more advanced, we're going to find more and more people who have mild cases. Of but we haven't had also, any testing. Also, no, the tests are well, also getting the, the, more I want to, I want to go to too. John on this <laughs> because I want to talk about what we're doing here in Maryland. Right. John, the governor, Governor Hogan, has shut down schools for two weeks. Right. Now, that sounds like a sound decision except for the fact that there's no certainty 
that two weeks from now the situation will be any better. Well, than and, it is and today. I think the way the governor did it was right, which is to say we're going to shut it down for two weeks. We're trying to do um, moving people apart from each other, which is the what everybody's recommending, you mm -hmm. know, social distancing, and that's schools are definitely part of that process. If he needs to take it longer than that, I think he will. I mean, what I like about what the governor did is he was active. He, he decided to do something and he decided to be proactive as 11 other governors have been. So I, I don't think that that's a mistake. The question is what happens in the next two weeks and what do you do after that? Well, I want, but let's follow up on that. Sure. Because if the virus is as contagious as Susan is led to believe, then we we're, all led we're, to all going, we're, then we're, then we're all going to get it. Well, I no. There's no, there's no protection. You're, from you're, you're, you're right, actually, Casey. It is, you know, I was at a Whole Foods market today where there are hundreds of thousands of people trying to buy their groceries, and undoubtedly there was somebody in that Whole Foods who has well, just it. Just like so, the fellow who wrote so we're all on gonna, Jet Blue. We're all mm -hmm. going to end up with some exposure to it. We all are. We, we, we all and are. We can, and we can try to try our best to avoid it by doing the things Wash our hands. that have been recommended to us. Um, and, and we have to do that. But, but the point is, I'm glad officials are taking things that we are not used to, closing schools, saying you can't have more people around. That's good. That what they're trying to do is do the well, right so thing. So let me ask you this question. So next fall, if we have a, str a strong flu season, we're supposed to shut down the government again? No, 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 no. no. See, I think well, one of the things that's going to happen here is we're all going to get exposed, as you have just said, and we're all just also going to develop an immunity to it, some immunity to it. They're not guaranteeing for each of it. No, immunity, but though, the point time. is some of us will develop an immunity to it, and it will become like another kind of but, common but that, flu. The, the, fact, the fact is, this coronavirus is not unique in the fact that coronavirus is around us Correct. all the time. Correct. It's just this new strain mm -hmm. that we haven't Correct. developed an immunity to. Now, Susan, there are 29 million Americans who have gotten the flu since last fall, and they've resulted in 16,000 deaths. So don't you think this is a little hyperbole to go on about how contagious this is? Hell no. I don't know what rock you've been under, Casey, but this is serious. They have changed the name to this now, and I want to make certain you got it. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Virus. It goes to your lungs, and for a certain population in this country, at least four of us, I think, on this stage are a part of that, who, and anyone who has limited capabilities to fight things off, whether you have diabetes or Cancer. asthma, it, and, and as Mark said, it is far more virulent. And the purpose of closing things down is that it's stopping this upward spread right. so that if you have it, people staying in place will get through it. If they have to go to the hospital, great, but hopefully they won't go. And Governor Hogan was on TV today as a part of the, um, as the president or the, whatever the chair is of the Governor's Association. And he said, you got to take it seriously. And today he added, no gatherings in Maryland over 250 people. Well, and minute, I can I say the, I'm the, really listen, proud listen, I'm gonna of you. I'm going to be the skunk of the picnic here. Because what <laughs> really? difference does it make if you're in a gathering of 250 people or 500 people, like in, they banned in New York, which is the size of a Broadway theater, <laughs> or, or 10,000 people? If you're still going to be a, more exposed people to it, have and it, fact, Susan, and more and a, Susan, but there, but there are drugs they've developed. They're using a couple of AIDS drugs and cancer drugs to treat this very effectively. The people that have asthma are not going to die. Yes, There's they are. They're got, dying already out in got, Washington. Are but, they not? But there this are. Is, this but just came out this morning. To answer, answer, but, answer, but to yeah. answer Ka Casey's question, the the reason for shutting it down is to slow this trajectory right. so mm -hmm. that we're not. You mentioned the 29 million. 29 million, if we had the same number, get this, this as, as had the flu last year, would translate at 2% to not 16,000 deaths, right. 580,000 deaths. Yes. That's a staggeringly yeah. large and difference. And I think when Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson said 
we have the flu. I talked to people who the first time it hit them, a name they heard of actually has the flu. And the as flu? the day, yeah, they have the flu. They're in Australia. You mean they no, don't they, have the coronavirus? No, they, they do have, have the coronavirus. Yes, they have. They and you know, they had the flu. They, I mean, had, they thought they had the flu. Yeah, so but they went it's and the got coronavirus, tested. and they have it. And for the first time, and as days goes on, more and more of us are going to find people who have it. And people are going to die, we may very well know. And there is everyone who gets this doesn't die. No, but no. there yeah. will be people There's who more do people that have survived there than will, have died. I mean this is this is what I think is is, is where I find people have, is the tipping point on all this. Is that yes, we have to take practical considerations and, and be safe, but not everyone who gets this is going to die. No, but no. You, but you you just said it. We have to take practical steps that are gonna make it less impactful and it doesn't spike. And you know, it, 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 it gets through the population. I guarantee you, one of us on the stage is gonna have is it. Gonna have it. And, and we don't have um, enough respirators in this country for no, it. But, That's but, scary but, too. But, but he's right. We have to take the steps that will make this less impactful. And we're doing that. I, I, I mean, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of optimistic because People are starting to do things. People are starting to change their lives. People are starting to make adjustments. Quar and quarantining and, themselves. And, and quarantining themselves. The point is, you know, we're Americans. We can get over this. It's, and it's I've, not I've gonna really, be that bad. And it's, I have to say, I don't say this often, but I am really proud of Governor Hogan. Yeah. He is doing an amazing job. And so then Gov uh, County Executive Elridge come out and builds on it. And right. I think it's, it's right. the right thing to do. So, so Dwight, I'm going to ask yeah. you this question, sure. tongue in cheek. Okay. <laughs> you know, since we have closed down most okay. of government official mm -hmm. actions, yep. Why don't we just shut the government down? Uh, I tell you, why we until okay. it's over. Okay. Uh, as you know, I deal play in the government sector on the contracting side of things. I've been on a number of our calls. They are doing teleworking. They're forcing telework, and this is going to be great because this is going to. Right now, a lot of agencies are hesitant to telework. This is going to show that people can still be responsible mm -hmm. and work from home. And I think that's going to go for schools where kids will be able to learn from home, yep. thereby avoiding some of the uh, teachings from the school teachers that we may not want our kids to know. <laughs> you, you know, and I think it's a win-win. I think one of, one of the, the, the unintended consequences mm -hmm. will be that college students will realize they don't have to be on campus. Yep, correct. And all of those million dollar buildings that have been endowed <laughs> and need to be supported don't really need to be there and we don't have to be spending 80,000. Those 000, dormitory fees. Those yeah. dormitory yeah. fees yep. and $80,000 a year. Not if you're taking a chemistry or biology lab or you're studying well, medicine that, that or may nursing. Be, that, may, or that may be you for the stuff stem kids. But, 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 but for some little poet that needs to, uh, that, need, that wants to you know, express themselves, do they you can know, do that, they there, can do that there in There is a problem Susan. though in this county and, and the county system, I, I, I Quickly, commend them yeah. for doing it, is making certain that the kids who are on free and reduced meals are going to have food delivered to them. And there is a very large sector in this county where poor kids don't have computers. Well, listen, and they're trying the, the to approach the that also. The unintended consequences here are enormous. Yep. Be because, we, because we have hourly workers who are going to lose their, lose their money. I, was, I worked my way through law school as a bartender. I can't imagine yep. if I lost two shifts. If I'm shut down for two weeks, there's my rent or, money. Well, you heard that, all the, the people who are selling stuff at the March Madness, you know, yeah. events. Well, you heard so. Nancy the, Pelosi's we gotta, we gotta working go to, on we gotta that. We got to go to break, but I'll, I will just say before I go into the, final, the the read and the segue, the worst part of this for me is the cancellations of the St. Patrick's Day parades, which I think is just utter nonsense that we that we cancel St. Patrick's Day parade. They can cl they can do away with church, but St. Patrick's Day parade, <laughs> that's sacred. <laughs> Now, as I go to break, I want to get serious, and, and I want to urge our audience to stand fast against the roaring winds of panic, to assess your individual situation, to take no risks, but to be resolute, and I want to recognize John for saying the same thing, and realize that this crisis will pass and we as Americans will continue on. Stay tuned after this short break. And welcome back. John. I know it's hard to shift topics from the Wuhan Kenora virus, but I want to try as hard as it may to focus yeah. on our General Assembly because they're in the legislative session right. and they're supposed to finish up in a couple of weeks. But is it possible, because they're, they're going to have a special yeah. session this weekend, 
yep. that they could finish early and then the governor would have to call them back for a special session. Yeah, it's, a, it's complicated, but you're on the right track. Um, I heard this afternoon that the legislature is going to try to end early. Uh, they're going to try to finish everything they're doing this week so that they have two weeks left and they may leave at the end of this week. Um, it gets complicated how you use the different days and the calendar and everything else, but they actually want to finish by the end of the week so that the governor, if he's going to veto something like the tax bill to pay for the education thing, they can come back and override the veto. That's kind of their goal. Um, here's the pressure. There are issues that aren't just the bill or the budget or anything else. There are things that, you know, the environmentalists want in terms of, uh, cli um, you know, climate change. They want bills passed. There are other bills that other people are really invested in. Um, so it's going to be hard to do what they're trying to do, which is end by the end of the week um, and come back. Um, but I think that's their goal. Well, let, me ask you a, let me ask you a question. Why, if that's the case, and with, with, with uh, veto-proof majorities in right. both houses, why would the govern, governor call them back? It, it, that's the point. They want to end so that they can come back. But they can they bring have, themselves they have a back. Sufficient, doesn't the governor have a sufficient number of days to, before he has to veto? I, I don't know how many days he has. That's the question. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the stuff done that they want to get done and then get out of there so that they can bring themselves. I talked to Ann Kaiser today. She said the most important thing is with working through Sunday is to get the budget finished. Right. And then everything else is like Correct. gravy. But as long as they get the budget done, if things were to grow worse, at least they've got that done. And that's the right. goal through well, Sunday. But, but, but again, they're trying to give the, the number of days where they can bring themselves back and override so, the So the key issue is how many days the governor has Correct. before he has to issue his veto Correct. Mm -hmm. in, in order for them to, to Correct. force him Correct. to call. For, so they can bring themselves well, So back. they can bring themselves, yeah. they can bring themselves back. Correct. Well, what, what if the virus is worse then? They're going to do think that? that They'll tell them I, think, I think they come back anyway. They phone in their vote. Yeah, they, they phone they, it in. Almost they mail it in anyway, anyway Susan. <laughs> They're legislators. Sorry, John. They're I, I want to talk. I want to talk, I wanna talk about. I want to talk about uh, Montgomery County, and we have to talk about you know what the little you know un, unreported uh, problem between the uh, growing tension between the school superintendent Jack Smith and the school teachers union. Susan, is this going to have an, how big a problem is this? And we have an election for a board of, board of Education coming up at the end of April. Is this going to be a, an issue in that election? Um, I think that you're overblowing this issue between the school board and the superintendent. There are always stress points between a boss and the union. And that's all it is. The president of the union said, yeah, we have some disagreements now. Um, what Smith has been doing is some reorganizations and appointing people without the blessing of the union. He has every right to do that. Yeah, he may be getting some people ticked off, but he was just reappointed to four more years. So, you know, they'll get over it. In terms of the school board race, nobody much pays attention to that. And I don't know if, I doubt if it will affect it any more than it does any other year. Why, because if, you if you're the Apple ballot, you're just going to be Elected. named anyway? Well, no, the, uh, the Apple ballot isn't as much as what it used to be. And the reason being is that teachers aren't necessarily at the polling places with all the early voting and stuff, which they won't be doing if they're back at school in yeah. April when we vote. It's, it's I think not there's actually a serious chance that we're going to have a mail-in ballot that people are talking well, about that. Well, they're the already level. telling people to mail in and get yep. your ballot now and no, get a mail I mean ballot. No, but only a mail ballot. Yeah. Just do absentee, an absentee yes. mail-in yep. ballot. Yes, and that well, would save a lot of issues, but for people who like to stand outside the polls and work on your spring tan, it's going to be tough on people like me. So, Mark, like we me. did a mail ballot. What about ma uh, voter security? Would, would, would that be an issue? It's potentially an issue. I mean, it's, it's always a been. Issue. It's it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's always an issue as to who registers and who who can send back. This is this. However, is the security issue is exactly the same as is with yeah. absentee mm -hmm. ballots. So, Correct. 
Uh, so, it, and Washington so the, State is all male, and, and, and they've done it for the one, years. The one who's going to be controlling <laughs> the one who's going to be controlling this is Linda Lamone, who's head of the Maryland State Board of Elections, and she is tough, and she will do it right, and she won't bend. And it's done so. before. So, <laughs> all right. So, Dwight, before we leave the county sure. and, and and our our mm -hmm. topics tonight, uh, County Executive Mark Elrich, Elrich uh, floated an idea of increasing commercial property taxes to pay for a bus rapid transit lanes, which, have, which he doesn't yeah. have the money in his budget for. Was this just a trial balloon or, or is this a serious proposal? I think it's a serious proposal, but Mark Elrick should just walk down to the Rockville Town Center and see all the restaurants that are shutting down because of uh, taxes, uh, the parkings uh, situation in downtown Rockville. Uh, we've got business, businesses closing every day in uh, Montgomery County. They're leaving Montgomery County. Why? Because taxes are too high. Now he wants to raise the property tax on commercial business. That's insane. I mean, you're going to see a lot of these car dealerships are probably going to leave the county as a result of having to pay uh, higher property tax. And car dealerships have acres and acres to put their cars out. Their property tax is going to be a lot higher than... And you're going to see we don't a, like cars, uh, uh, Dwight. We, and we, BRT we, doesn't work. That's the other thing. Bus rapid transit does not work. It, nobody's going to be using bus rapid transit. If you go, a uh, good example of this is the Baltimore uh, light rail and transit. You see those go, they go from uh, Timonium to Reisterstown. Those trains are empty all the time. We're talking buses, not trains. That was buses are Dunn Schaefer's little. Well, buses it, are also, project. if you look at mass, mass transit is not as successful. Well, it will be fascinated to see how the success of the Purple Line, yeah. once it's finally completed, to see how well traveled but th that is. Reason Foundation does, did a great study Quickly. several years ago up. about building more roads, and you got to use all the above, roads, uh, rail, buses, uh, but the problem is Mark Elrick does not want to build a single new uh, mile of road in Montgomery County. Well, he's not the, he's not, he's not the only one, Dwight. I got, I yeah, got, oh, I got oh, news yeah, for you. Yeah, him I, is, I ran for county, county council yeah. in 2000. They didn't want to build roads yep. then, then And that's either. the problem. That is the biggest problem. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and, uh, to, to 21 this week. And you got to stay tuned for Parting Shots because these guys are on fire. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back. Now with parting shots, Susan Heltimus. Uh, today it was uh, learned that the National Center for Medical National um, Intelligence, which is at Fort Detrick, knew back in December that there were problems with the virus in China and that China wasn't doing well. They informed the White House, but it went no farther. Then it was learned today that Secretary of HHS Azar went to President Trump to give him a briefing on the virus and he got really irritated and doesn't believe in it. And so he walked away without giving him the real briefing. And today, what was really interesting is Larry Hogan admitted as the governor, the president of the Governor's Association, that the White House has botched this, the testing. And so we should all say our prayers that the test kits come out and that people are able to get tested. That's it. Dwight Patel, your parting shot. My parting shot is, if you, Casey, if you notice, could you go up 270 on the Beltway on the weekends? It's crazy traffic. The solution is building more roads, widen the Beltway, widen 270. Democrats are anti-roads. We need to elect Republicans to build more roads in Montgomery County. Thank you, Dwight. Mark Uncle, for your parting shot. Well, on a somewhat less partisan note than my uh, two <laughs> predecessors, I want to acknowledge the great work that some Maryland institutions are doing on the coronavirus. In particular, Johns Hopkins has a wonderful site to be able to track uh, the uh, way that it is progressing by jurisdiction, uh, but also the additional institutions like NIH and FDA that have such an important role in the public health. Thank you, Mark. John Hurston, your party shot. Real quick, uh, just a shout out to all the healthcare workers who are out there. I have many friends who are nurses, um, who are in the thick of it right now, getting retrained, trying to get ready for the, the spike in this thing. Shout out to them, they're working extra hours. They're doing a great thing for their own families as well as for all of us. Thank you, John. And I wanna thank everybody for being here this evening. It was a great, great, important discussion. And it shows once again that the important issues that affect us all are, have no, no boundaries of, poli of political boundaries. And I wanna thank the audience for tuning in each and every week to Montgomery County's hardest hitting political talk show. For 21 this week, I'm Casey Aiken.
Hello everyone, I'm, this is Casey Aiken, the host of 21 This Week. I would just want to let our audience know that 21 This Week will be going on hiatus due to the coronavirus and the decision by Montgomery County government to close its facilities for the time being. I hope you all continue to watch 21 This Week when we come back from our short break.